Hello everybody, Jamie here from FM Scout. In today's video, I am bringing you five clubs that you can try on Football Manager and these clubs have a sugar daddy status. Now all five of these are foreground. So firstly, what does foreground mean? Foreground means basically the chairman will just throw money at the club constantly until the chairman leaves. Now it's getting to that time of the year where you are looking for new challenges, you are looking for new saves and I haven't obviously gone for the obvious, of course you have teams like Manchester City and teams like that, I've gone, I've ignored all of them type of teams and we've gone for a few clubs in nations that I think you guys will enjoy. Before we get into team number one, can I ask you guys a massive favour, please hit that red subscribe button below the video. It would make my day, and honestly, we're getting so, so close to 100,000. It's, it's coming, boys. It's coming. I also want you to let me know in the comments if you plan on trying any of these saves. Let me know if you've played these saves already on FM20 or even on FM19 if they was a foreground chairman as well. But let's go on to team number one. We are moving to Northern Ireland now at Lawn FC in the Danske Bank Premiership. You can see... Lawn FC are owned by Purple Bricks founder. So if anyone don't know what Purple Bricks are, it's like a estate agent in the UK. And yeah, this guy recently took over. I think it was maybe a year or so ago, two years ago. But you can see on the screen, this guy wants to make this club the biggest in the land. Now, in terms of the history of Lawn, they haven't really got much. I mean, there was in the Premiership around 2003-04. They stayed there for a few years. They got relegated, they finished 13th in 2007-2008. They spent a lot of time in the second tier in the championship, almost like 10 years. And then they finally got promoted last season. So this will be a good save because it's your first time in the Premiership of Northern Ireland and you've got a bit of money to spend in comparison to a lot of the other teams. Now, what are the? Let's, firstly actually, let's have a look at where they are predicted to finish. Now, don't forget it's their first year in this in this league. They are predicted fourth, and that's after getting promoted. But let's have a look at their finances. So they've got £4 million in the bank, which is a lot of money for a Northern Ireland team. You can see the transfer budget is only 15 k but they will pump money in over time. You can see the wage budget is 20.4k, which actually is, is, is really good. For a Northern Ireland team in terms of I mean if you want to look at any kind of comparisons so if we look at the team that's kind of predicted Linfield who, who's won them got kind of the most Premier League if we go to their finances and have a look what they have in the bank so they've got like 402,000 in the bank in comparison to 4 million that's a big difference you know their wage budget is only 13.5k you could probably win the league in the first season. So what are the cons of managing in Northern Ireland? Well, the cons, I'm sure you guys are aware, is the rep. The rep falls around the same as Gibraltar. So you've got a big, big task on your hand in terms of Europe, Europa League, Champions League. It's going to take you a lot of years to build something and great and in, generally improve the rep. From, from this nation because it's going to take a long time and you never see a Northern Ireland team in the group stages of the Europa League or the Champions League, do you? So it's, it's a big challenge. I think domestically you could easily become a powerhouse but if you are looking for a challenge like this where domestically, domestically you will be amazing but continentally it's going to be a struggle and just trying to get to them group stages is going to be your number one task. In terms of your squad, the biggest one is Fuad Sule. The Nigerian 22-year-old, a player that you really want to keep a hold of, is four and a half star based on this team. And you can see the type of quality that Northern Ireland, if you've never managed in this nation before, this is the type of quality that would generally be the best player in the league. If you ever want to see the best players in the league, the best thing to do is go to the season preview and you can see Suwale comes about here, but Linfield has got one of the best centre mids in the league. And you can see... This is the type of player, I mean, the guy's vied at 325k. Now, Linfield are going to be a team that's going to take a long time to knock off the top. They do have Shane Lavery as well. And oh, I, I've got a lot of experience with Shane Lavery. So, yeah, honestly, I think domestically it could be really easy based on the money you've got. But can you build something for that, that Champions League, you know? FC Famalicão in Portugal. Liga Nos 
a club, a nation that I've got a lot of experience with. I find Portuguese saves to be one of my, honestly, my favourite saves ever. And I would recommend that if you haven't done one in Portugal, just to give it a go, there's barely any rules. You've got a lot of freedom in terms of transfers. This club is owned by Jorge Mendes, the billionaire owner. And you can see, let's have a look at their history. So last season, they finished second in the second tier. They did get promoted, so they, they are spending their first time in Liga Nos this year. And you can see they've had like a really weird history. Now, it, they started in like the fourth tier. They went all the way up to the third tier. They then got relegated two tiers, back up two tiers. Really strange football club, but you can see since the owner took over, they've, they've kind of had that that all the way to the top. They spent three years in the second league, and then yeah, they won it. Well, they finished second last year. So in terms of the finances for this club, they have got four million in the bank. They have a 1.2 million transfer budget, and they have a wage budget of 178 thousand pounds. So really not that bad. You guys just have to bear in mind that a foreground chairman generally pumps money in through the season. So just because they haven't got a lot of money now doesn't mean that they won't get a lot of money in the future. Your two star players are Ruben Lamares, the Portuguese 24-year-old, and Gustafu, who is a 19-year-old with a lot of potential. You also have, at the moment at the club, um, Perez, who is one of the best wonder kids on the game, the centre-back, but sadly he is only on loan and you can see he's on loan from Atletico Madrid. So there's not really any chance of you getting him unless you spend a lot of money. But you've got a lot of, you've got a young team. If you look at the age of the team, you are yeah, like I mean you've got obviously the 36 year old, but generally it's a pretty young team with a lot of potential. And you can see if we go to the under 19s and under 23s, you've got a few players in the under 23s. You've got a really big team to be honest. And you can definitely do something with this club. But again, Portugal football is really, really fun to manage in. Now, sticking in Portugal, if you fancy, if you maybe don't fancy the top tier of Portugal straight away and you want to build from the bottom, Lusitania, La Russa, a club in the third tier of Portugal, also have a foreground chairman. Now, again, another club that has been kind of yo yoing up and down the leagues, as you can see in terms of this graph. But you can see they got promoted. They actually finished second last year, but they didn't get promoted. Hugo Mendes, a well-known Portuguese businessman, took over the club. And if you go to their staff, you could probably see that he is in charge at the top. Hugo Mendes, though very excited about him. The guy is wanting to pump a lot of money and develop this club into one of the best clubs in Portugal. And the guy essentially needs your help. So let's have a look at their, their team, though. In terms of actually let's look where they're predicted to finish if we go to the season preview you can see the predicted fourth and in terms of their squad you've got a lot of maneuvering to do i mean you've got some good players you've got zach per tavares enrique you are i think professional as well right i think let's have a look you are professional in the third tier so you've got a lot of movement in terms of the finances though four million in the bank a 1.2 million transfer budget and 17k wages and that is in the third tier of of portugal you should really do damage in the first and second year of this save if you bring in the right players get some loans in try not to spend too much straight away and honestly the guy will just give you some money here and there as you get promoted through the leagues but yeah you can see the team does need some work you've got a lot of portuguese players which you need in the third tier so it's going to be a challenge you can't necessarily spend all that money straight away but you, there's definitely Portuguese players out there that you can sign, but that is Luis Diana. Spanish saves never really feature on my videos because I don't really generally find them that interesting. I'm not a fan of the rules, but there's a club here, Almeria, owned by a Saudi. He is the new owner. I, I'm not sure when it when it happened, but you can see he's bought, he bought the shareholding package from Alfonso Garcia, president since 2003. The operation is done in the absence of a document that has to come from the higher sports council. But he is the new owner of Almeria and he should be on the game. Let's have a quick check. We go to staff. You can see the, the Saudi is there as well with a managing director from Egypt. Now, this club do have a foreground. I can just show you that. If we go to the club details, go to finances, they have a front end. And let's have a look what they've got. So they do start in the second league. They have got 4.6 million in the bank. A 1.5 million transfer budget 
and a 206,000 wage budget. Now, again, a, a really good club. They've kind of been a bit of a yo-yo team. You can see they was in for three years in La Liga, and then they got relegated in 2010. They finished seventh. They got promoted again. They managed to stay one year in La Liga. They got relegated again, and since then, they spent four years in the second Liga of Spain. So they, they need the promotion. They, they desperately need that promotion, and I think you can do it. They have a 15,000 capacity stadium. In terms of where they're predicted this year, though, they are predicted to finish ninth. Now, obviously, the cons of this save would be to try and knock off Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Atletico Madrid, but it can be done, you know? It definitely can be done, but you... I mean, you've even got players in this league like Kagura and players like that. So you've got, honestly, some some interesting interesting players in this league. And it's not the easiest league to get promoted from. But I've personally never managed in La Liga or in Spain. So if you guys have, let me know how it is. Because I'm thinking about actually starting this. Uh, in terms of the players they have, though, they have, you know, Valentin Vada, Nunes. You've got a lot of players on loan. Sergio Aguza is probably your best player. The central midfielder, advanced playmaker. He's got 16 free kicks, so that, that could come in handy. But no, uh, generally a, a very good save to do. And let me know in the comments if you plan on trying this. Now, maybe one of the most interesting teams on this list. FC Lausanne in Switzerland. The second tier, not even in the top tier of Switzerland. And again, another bit of a yo-yo club. I mean, they was in the top tier for a few years. They then got relegated, got relegated again. And it looks like they maybe got demoted to the fourth tier. They did get two promotions in a row. They kind of stuck in the championship for a while. They did get the promotion back up to the main tier. They spent two years there, got relegated again, stayed in the second tier, got promoted. They went, stayed in the first tier for another year. They got relegated. And last season, they finished third. Now you can see this club is owned by Jim Ratcliffe, who is the founder of chemicals and fracking giant Ineos. But again... They have got a foreground, so this guy is going to be pumping in a lot of money to the club. And being in Switzerland, very hard to compete in the Europa League and in the Champions League. But if we look at there where they're predicted to finish, you can see they are predicted to finish top of the league. Let's have a look at the finances. 4.2 million in the bank, 156,000 transfer budget, and an 88.9k wage budget. So... You've got a lot of things to work on, and if we go to top league, you can kind of see the obviously you guys know the, the teams like this, but in terms of season preview, you've got young boys, Basel, Sion, Zurich, all to compete with, try and win that title and get back up to the main league. But in terms of your players that you have, your biggest player really is Turkez, who is a Bosnian striker, very good player, still quite young. Honestly, you should really demolish the first season so quickly. And again, it's just trying to build for that next season. But it's a really interesting save. Something that I want to do. Again, I've never really managed in Switzerland. So I would honestly consider giving this a go and trying to raise the rep of the nation and see what happens. But yeah, that's been the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments if you plan on taking over any of these. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.